scientifically possible for Earth experience collision with other celestial body. How if a giant comet collides with Earth, then destroys all orders of human life? On the other side, parties which have authority to prevent this instead are confused. Then how impacts toward life on Earth? Is it a new life after death? That is that definition of apocalypse truly? Watch this recap if you want to have imagination about life after Earth is destroyed. The movie commences with scientist Gregor Storff attending a party at the U.S. Embassy in Berlin, Germany, in 2010. During the event, Gregor receives alarming news that the comet he discovered, Bayleader 7, is on a collision course with Earth. In a rush, he brings his daughter Anna to the command center, where his colleague Hinsa reveals that the comet poses an imminent threat of extinction. Gregor's fear and unprofessionalism are evident, but determined to find a solution, he contacts Colonel Waters. He creates a satellite weapon called Solstar 2. While the weapon successfully cuts the comet in half, the smaller piece collides with Western Russia. At the same time, Captain Tom Parker, head of U.S. Embassy Security, evacuates his family to safety. However, Anna refuses to leave without her father. As Captain Parker prepares to leave for duty, his superior, Colonel Waters, forces him to abandon his family. Despite Parker's protests, he is apprehended by another soldier. He helplessly watches as the aircraft departs, leaving his wife and daughter on the ground. Three years later, the situation has remained the same. Due to the debris thrown into the atmosphere, all of Europe's population was evacuated to North Africa. Elsewhere, deep inside the snow forest, former U.S. security Captain Parker is with his dog, whom he calls Sasquatch. He witnessed an aircraft carrying personnel sent to investigate the matter explode while flying over the area. The soldiers inside were just hanging out while the temperature in the room started to get warmer and warmer. One of them goes to investigate but shortly the plane is filled with smoke, and the wings catch fire causing the plane to crash midair, killing all the personnel inside. Back at the center, evidence points to Solstar 2 in the attack. President Miranda Harrison recruits Waters to lead an expedition, including XSS Sarah Henley and Anna, Gregor Storff's daughter, to find out who controls the satellite and destroys it. Shortly after being contacted, Anna is more than willing to come and help. After she arrives, Parker briefly meets her again and reminds her who he formerly was. She remembers him. Although Parker knows Colonel Waters leads the mission, he asks to join, secretly hoping that his family is somehow still alive. When they all gather to meet the commanding president, Captain Parker requests to be involved, and the president seems to like his approach. He still has issues with the colonel, but they somehow have to get through it, and Parker must follow his orders. Later, at the United States airfield in Morocco, Colonel Waters and Parker confront each other. They still have unresolved issues, but the colonel introduces him to his second-in-command, Sarah Henley, who will be giving orders alongside him. The woman doesn't seem to be as hard as the colonel. She is very friendly, okay maybe too friendly because she will end up in the same shower with Parker before departing. Parker glimpses his wife and daughter and hopes to find them alive. Once the plane takes off, the colonel tells them to get into the trucks and be ready for the drop. They will be inside the car and once the satellites start turning, they will drop from the plane. Second in command Sarah and Captain Parker, along with his pet Sasquatch, are on the same trucks while the others are together. Suddenly, the satellite starts turning, but Solstar 2 zeroes in on its position and starts to destroy the aircraft. The wings caught fire like the previous plane, and the smoke began. The colonel amidst it was 40 seconds after these incidents, the aircraft exploded. Anna gets terrified, but the team manages to parachute out with two armored personnel carriers. Once on the ground that is covered with huge snow and cold, the team begins the trip, but the ground isn't stable, and they keep banging while they drive. Parker explains to Sarah that the comet caused some kind of problem with the magma flow. Just as he tells her, we watch one of the ice geyser eruptions and how deadly it could be if it gets to one of the trucks. Watching this, Parker made a detour and was scolded by the colonel. Thus, while crossing the riverbank, Parker made a detour. The colonel quickly made a call and scolded him. Parker explained that the road is extremely jagged and unstable, but the colonel insists it can perfectly handle the weight of two trucks. They decide to take another route and still, they must cross through Cologne and use the Cologne Cathedral as a guide. However, just as they start driving at a different pace, one of the ice geysers strikes the colonel and Anna's truck, and they end up on the verge of death. Parker watches this and makes a quick move to save them. He rushes outside despite the cold and extreme weather and sends them ropes for rescue. Anna jumps off successfully while the colonel manages to do so right after her. However, they lose several men to marauders at the ice geyser. When they finally reach Berlin, they find that the city is buried deep under 20 meters of snow and ice. Parker offers to go out on a sled and check things closer, and Sarah joins him. 
Once they took out and entered the sled the team separated into two and the remaining people stayed there. Sarah and Parker drove towards the city but they got stopped by a huge hill. Once they are out they come to see that it's a dead end and they cannot go forward. Suddenly someone shoots at them from a distance. They rush to the vehicle for safety. Sarah tries to shoot in the same direction but it seems there are lots of them and the fog is their defense. They manage to get back into the sled and drive back to the others. However, just as they get there, they notice the others are also under attack. The two slowly come out of the sled and join them as they watch the sled get bombed by the enemy side. The enemy is a group of unknown survivors for now, but they surely aren't peaceful and welcoming as they open fire and the shootout begins. The woman at the peak of the men retreats backward to find something to hide in. They came across an underground tunnel and they all headed inside it for safety now free of the guns being fired at them. They started to look around and came across a history of survivors who were found inside the tunnel and who were trying to stay alive despite the extreme weather. A girl who stayed there for a very long time approached them and led them to the rest of the survivors. She is alone and Parker is reminded of his daughter, so he pleases her and takes care of her. It turns out that about 600 people are hiding in the subway tunnel and they reveal that the distributors supply them. They are happy to be found and indicate that it's been years since rescue became helpless. In the meantime, Parker takes out the photo of his family and starts to inquire about them. Of course, nobody knew them, and he was disappointed. The woman who stands up to the community also tells them there is a doctor 200 meters from here and he has helped them organize things around there. They find out a blind man called the doctor is hiding below the region and supplies the people with food. The doctor's quarters are actually a verdant greenhouse and he is Gregor Storff, the scientist himself. Anna is happy to see her father, but she is saddened to know that he is blind. The doctor tells her he couldn't leave the people while he was the one who created the chaos in the first place. He says he is now in charge of distributing food and supplies to the survivor communities and bridging a gun like this to this vulnerable place was unwise. While the colonel and the doctor converse, a man strangles the soldier who was keeping an eye outside. He and other of his men managed to take down anything that came upon them, and they were the same guys that opened fire on the team. Meanwhile, the group not suspecting anything keeps asking questions to the doctor who was in charge of the satellite weapon Solstar 2. He explains that he and his chief engineer, Klaus Hinsa, were the designers of Solstar 2. It was originally meant to be a new power source to lessen the dependency on oil, but due to military funding, it became a weapon. He says he ordered Hinsa to reactivate the satellite to execute a program he has devised to extend its area of effect and stop the permanent winter. He is alarmed to hear that Hinsa is using it as a weapon, but just as he was telling this, the distributors arrived and again started to shoot at them. Anna tried to protect her father while the rest of them fought them off. However, despite the team managing to kill all the distributors, the doctor was killed by a sniper. Before he died, he kept telling Anna to remember and remember. She asks him what to remember, but he breathes his last breaths before being able to say to her. Enraged, the team heads to the commanding facility to confront Hinsa who is powering up the satellite to destroy Tainter, the new headquarters city, as revenge for having been left behind. The team was faced with his guards, similar to the ones that opened fire at them, and they snuck slowly so as not to be spotted. The Colonel and Parker were knocking out guards that were on their way and finally came face to face with Hinsa. He refuses to stop his actions and Anna has to remember the password to enter the system rooms. They have guns and all it takes to end he intends to shoot him however, unless the door opens it can't get to him. Parker pushes Anna to remember the password, and after a few attempts, she recalls that her father has been trying to tell her the password is the term remember itself. It worked, and they managed to shoot down Hinsa, who was acting mad by the way the horror had changed him, and he had to be put down by Sarah. Next up, Anna takes control of the system board. Meanwhile, the colonel apologizes to Parker for his earlier actions. Sarah watches the earlier little girl on a camera along with the dog Sasquatch. She asks Parker to get her and he heads out. Shortly, this is when the reverse plot appears and she unexpectedly kills Waters and orders Anna to retarget Soulstar 2 to destroy Mecca and possibly other targets in the Middle East. She states that an unnamed group will pay her $10 million for her service. Meanwhile, Parker returns with the girl and he overhears the conversation. He glimpses Anna from the window and sees her captive. Sarah doesn't see him but Anna does. She creates a distraction and asks Sarah to get her the manual for the system since she has forgotten how to operate some of it. Once she turns her face, Anna uses the change to open the door to the control room and Parker manages to enter quickly. He shoots at her and misses. She shoots and breaks the lamp glasses on him, which she then manages to hold Anna and threatens to kill her if he doesn't put down his gun. She makes her point by shooting Anna's leg and making herself clear to him.
he gives up his weapon and just then she shoots it in twice. Anna manages to strike her with something, and this gives Parker a chance to take her over, despite being wounded. He attacks Sarah, nearly losing before Anna shoots her and kills her once and for all. Right after that, Anna aims the satellite toward Europe and executes her father's program to kickstart the weather, causing Soulstar 2 to use up its last energy reserves to release a massive wide-beam microwave torrent that begins warming the atmosphere. Parker and Anna continue to search for his family and find his home. Inside, he discovers his wife's final message to him beside their frozen bodies. The film comes to an end back outside. They watch the thick permanent clouds over Germany dissipate, revealing the warming sun once again.